This is the white paper for the Pi Network. Preface As the world becomes increasingly digital, cryptocurrency is the next natural step in the evolution of money. Pi is the first digital currency for everyday people, representing a major step forward in the adoption of cryptocurrency worldwide. The mission is to build a cryptocurrency and smart contracts platform secured and operated by everyday people. The vision is to build the world's most inclusive peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, fueled by Pi, the world's most widely used cryptocurrency. A disclaimer, for more advanced reading, because Pi's mission is to be inclusive as possible, we're going to make this opportunity to introduce our blockchain newbies to the rabbit hole. Introduction. Why Cryptocurrencies Matter Currently, our everyday financial transactions rely upon a trusted third party to maintain a record of transactions. For example, when you do a bank transaction, the banking system holds a record and guarantees that the transaction is safe and reliable. Likewise, when Cindy transfers $5 to Steve using PayPal, PayPal maintains a central record of $5 debited from Cindy's account and $5 credited to Steve's. Intermediaries like banks, PayPal, and other members of the current economic system play an important role in regulating the world's financial transactions. However, the role of these trusted intermediaries also has limitations. One, an unfair value capture. These intermediaries amass billions of dollars in wealth creation. The PayPal market cap is $130 billion, but pass virtually nothing on to their customers. The everyday people on the ground whose money drives a meaningful proportion of the global economy. More and more people are falling behind. 2. Fees Banks and companies charge large fees for facilitating transactions. These fees often disproportionately impact lower income populations who have the fewest alternatives. 3. Censorship If a particular trusted intermediary decides that you should not be able to move your money, it can place restrictions on the movement of your money. Permission The trusted intermediary serves as a gatekeeper who can arbitrarily prevent anybody from being part of the network. 5. Pseudonyms at, the, at a time when the issue of privacy is gaining greater urgency, these powerful gatekeepers can accidentally disclose or force you to disclose more financial information about yourself than you may want. You see, Bitcoin's peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system was launched in 2009 by an anonymous programmer or group, Satoshi Nakamoto. It was a watershed moment for the freedom of money. For the first time in history, people could securely exchange value without requiring a third party or trusted intermediary. Paying in Bitcoin meant that people like Steve and Cindy could pay each other directly, bypassing institutional fees, obstructions, and intrusions. Bitcoin was truly a currency without boundaries, powering and connecting a new global economy. Bitcoin achieved this historical feat by using a distributed ledger, while the current financial system relies on the traditional central record of truth. The Bitcoin record is maintained by a distributed community of validators who access and update this public ledger. Imagine the protocol as a globally shared Google Sheet that contains a record of transactions, validated and maintained by this distributed community. The breakthrough of Bitcoin and general blockchain technology is that even though the record is maintained by a community, the technology enables them to always reach consensus on the truthful transactions, ensuring that cheaters cannot record false transactions or overtake the system. This technological advancement allows for the removal of the central intermediary without compromising technological financial security. The Benefits of Distributed Ledgers in addition to decentralization, Bitcoin, or cryptocurrencies in general, share a few nice properties that make money smarter and safer, 
although different cryptocurrencies may be stronger in some properties and weaker in others, based on different implementations of their protocols. Cryptocurrencies are held in cryptographic wallets, identified by a publicly accessible address, and is secured by a very strong, privately held password that is called a private key. This private key, secured by a very strong, privately held password called a private key. This private key cryptograph cryptographically signs transaction and is virtually impossible to create fraudulent signatures. This provides security and unseizability. Unlike traditional bank accounts that can be seized by government authorities, the cryptocurrency in your wallet can never be taken away by anyone without your private key. Cryptocurrencies are censorship resistant due to the de decentralized nature because anyone can submit transactions to any computer in the network to get recorded and validated. Cryptocurrency transactions are immutable because each block of transaction represents a cryptographic proof, a hash, of all the previous blocks that existed before that. Once someone sends you money, they cannot steal back their payment to you. No bouncing checks in blockchain. Some of the cryptocurrencies can even support atomic transactions or smart contracts built atop these cryptocurrencies that do not rely on law for enforcement but directly enforced through publicly auditable code which makes them trustless and can potentially get rid of middlemen in many businesses. Example, escrow for real estate. One of challenges of maintaining a distributed record of transaction is security, specifically how to have an open and editable ledger while preventing fraudulent activity. To address this challenge, Bitcoin introduced a novel process called mining. Using the consensus algorithm proof of work to determine who is trusted to make updates to the shared record of transactions, you can think of mining as a type of economic game that forces validators to prove their merit when trying to add transactions to the record, to qualify, validators must solve a series of complex computational puzzles. The validator who solves the puzzle first is rewarded by being allowed to post the latest block of transactions. Posting the latest block of transactions allows validators to mine a block reward currently 12.5 Bitcoin. This process is very secure but it demands enormous computational power and enormous energy consumption as users essentially burn money to solve the computational puzzle that earns them more Bitcoin. The burn to reward ratio is so punitive that it is always in validator self-interest to post honest transactions of the Bitcoin record. The problem. The centralization of power and money put the first generation of cryptocurrencies out of reach in the early days of Bitcoin, when only a few people were working to validate transactions and mining the first blocks, anyone could earn 50 Bitcoins by simply running Bitcoin mining software on their personal computer. As the currency began to gain in popularity, clever miners realized that they could earn more if they had more than one computer working to mine. As Bitcoin continued to increase in value, entire companies began to spring up to mine. These companies developed specialized chips, ASICs, and constructed huge farms of servers using these ASIC chips to mine Bitcoin. The emergence of these enormous mining corporations known drove the Bitcoin gold rush, making it very difficult for everyday people to contribute to the network and get rewarded. The efforts also began consuming increasingly large amounts of computing power, contributing to mounting environmental issues around the world. The ease of mining Bitcoin and the subsequent rise of Bitcoin mining farms quickly produced a massive centralization of production power and wealth in Bitcoin's network. To provide some context, 87% of all Bitcoins are now owned by 1% of their network. Many of these coins were mined virtually free in their first early days. As another example, Bitmain, one of Bitcoin's biggest mining operations, has earned billions in revenue and profits. The centralization of power in Bitcoin's network makes it very difficult and expensive for the average person. If you want to acquire Bitcoin, your easiest options are 1. To mine it yourself, or 2. Buy it on an exchange. 
Bitcoin was the first to show how cryptocurrency could disrupt the current financial model, giving people the ability to make transactions without having a third party in the way. The increase in flexibility and privacy continues to drive the inevitable march toward digital currencies as a new norm. Despite its benefits, Bitcoin's likely unintended concentration of money and power present a meaningful barrier to the mainstream adoption. As Pi's core team has conducted research to try to understand why people are reluctant to enter the cryptocurrency space, people consistently cited the risk of investing or mining as a key barrier to entry. My friends, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain a little. Number one, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you've ever been looking for to make a podcast in one place. Go ahead and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. The solution? Pi, enabling mining on mobile phones. After identifying these key barriers to adoption, the Pi core team set out to find a way that would allow everyday people to mine or earn cryptocurrency rewards for validating transactions on a distributed record of transactions. For Pi, we introduced the additional design requirement of employing a consensus algorithm that would also be extremely user-friendly and ideally enable mining on personal computers and mobile phones. In comparing existing consensus algorithms, the process that records transactions into a distributed ledger, the Stellar Consensus Protocol emerges as the leading candidate to enable user-friendly, mobile-first mining. SCP was architected by David Maziers, a professor of computer science at Stanford, who also serves as chief scientist at Stellar Development Foundation. SCP uses a novel mechanism called the Federated Byzantine Agreements to ensure that updates to a distributed ledger are accurate and trustworthy. SCP is also deployed in practice through the Stellar blockchain that has been operated since 2015. A simplified introduction to this algorithm. Before jumping to introducing the Pi consensus algorithm, it helps to have a simple, and ex a simple explanation on what a consensus algorithm does for a blockchain and the types of consensus algorithms that today's blockchain protocols generally use. Examples Bitcoin and SCP. This section is explicitly written in an oversimplified manner for the sake of clarity and is not complete. For higher accuracy, go check out the SCP and the SCP protocol white papers. A blockchain is a fault-tolerant distributed system that aims to totally order a list of blocks of transactions. Fault-tolerant distributed systems is an area of computer science that has been studied for many years. They are called distributed systems because they do not have a centralized server, but instead they are composed of a decentralized list of computers called nodes or peers that need to come to a consensus as to what the content and total ordering of blocks. They are also called fault tolerant because they can tolerate a certain degree of faulty nodes into the system. Up to 33% of nodes can be faulty and the overall system continues to operate normally. There are two broad categories of consensus algorithm. The ones that elect the node as the leader who produce the next block and the ones where there is no explicit leader but all nodes come to a consensus of what the next block is after exchanging votes by sending computer messages to each other. Strictly speaking, the last sentence contains multiple inaccuracies, but it helps us to explain the broad strokes. Bitcoin uses the first type of consensus algorithm. All Bitcoin nodes are competing against each other in solving a cryptographic puzzle. Because a solution is found randomly, essentially the node that finds the first solution by chance is elected the leader of the round who produces the next blocks. 
This algorithm is called proof of work and result in a lot of energy consumption. A simplified introduction to the stellar consensus protocol. Pi uses the other type of consensus algorithm and is based on SCP and an algorithm called Federated Byzantine Agreement. Such algorithms don't have energy waste, but they require exchanging many network messages in order for the nodes to come to consensus on what the next block should be. Each node can independently determine if a transaction is valid or not. Authority of making the transaction and double spending based on the cryptographic signature and the transaction history. However, for a network of computers to agree on which transactions to record in the block, and the order of these transactions and blocks, they need to message each other and have multiple rounds of voting to come to consensus. Intuitively, such messages from different computers in the network about which block is the next would look like the following. I propose we all vote for block A to be next. I vote for block A to be the next block. I confirm that the majority of the nodes I trust also voted for block A from which the consensus algorithm enables this node to conclude that A is the next block, and there could be no other A's in as the next block. Even though the above voting steps seem a lot, the internet is adequately fast and these messages are lightweight. Thus, such consensus algorithms are more lightweight than Bitcoin's proof of work. One major representative of such algorithms is called the Byzantine Fault Tolerance. Several of the top blockchains today are based on BFT, such as NEO and Ripple. One major criticism of BFT is that it has a centralization point. Because voting is involved, the set of the nodes participating in the voting or the quorum are centrally determined by the creator of the system in its beginning. The contribution of FBA is that instead of having one centrally determined quorum, each node sets their own quorum slices which will in turn form different quorums. New nodes can join the network in a decentralized way. They declare the nodes that they trust and convince their nodes to trust them, but they don't have to convince any central authority. SCP is one instantiation of FBA. Instead of burning energy like Bitcoin's proof-of-work consensus algorithm, SCP nodes secure the shared record by vouching for each node in the network as trustworthy. Each node in the network builds a quorum slice consisting of other nodes in the network that they deem to be trustworthy. Quorums are formed based on its members' quorum slices, and a validator will only accept new transactions if and only if a proportion of the node in their quorums will also accept the transaction. As validators across the network construct their quorums, these quorums help nodes to reach consensus about transactions with guarantee on security. You can learn more about that by watching this. Pi's Adaptation to SCP Pi intends to allow devices of individual to contribute on the protocol level and get rewarded, including mobile phones, laptops, and computers. Below is an introduction on how Pi applies SCP to enabling mining by individuals. There are four roles Pi users can play as Pi miners, namely Pioneers, a user of the Pi mobile app who is simply confirming that they are not a robot on a daily basis. This user validates their presence every time they sign into the app. They can also open the app to request transactions, example make a payment in Pi to another Pioneer, Contributor, a user of the Pi mobile app who is contributing by providing a list of pioneers he or she knows and trusts in aggregate. Pi contributors will build a global trust graph. Ambassador, a user of the mobile app who is introducing other users in Pi network. Node, a user who is a pioneer, a contributing using a contributor using the Pi mobile app and is also running the Pi Node software on their desktop or their laptop computer. The Pi Node software is a software that runs a score SCP algorithm, taking into account the trust graph information provided by the contributors. A user can play more than one of the above roles. All roles are necessary, thus all roles are rewarded with newly minted Pi on a daily basis as long as they participated and contributed during that given day. 
In the loose definition of a miner, being a user who receives newly minted currency as a reward for contribution, all four roles are considered to be Pi miners. We define mining more broadly than its traditional meaning equated to executing proof of work and census algorithm, as in Bitcoin or Ethereum. First of all, we need to emphasize that the Pi Node software has not been released yet, so this section is offered more as an architectural design and as a request to solicit comments from the technical community. The software will be fully open source and it will also heavily depend on Stellar Core, which is also open software. This means that anyone in the community will be able to read, comment, and propose improvements on it. Below are the proposed changes to SCP to enable mining by individual devices. The pros and cons of the first generation economic models. One of Bitcoin's most impressive innovations is its marriage of distributed systems with economic game theory. Here's some of the pros. Fixed supply. Bitcoin's economic model is simple. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. This number is set in code. With only 21 million to circulate among 7.5 billion around the world, there is not enough Bitcoin to go around. The scarcity is one of the most important drivers of Bitcoin's value. The decreasing block reward is also another pro. Bitcoin distribution scheme pictured below further enforces that the sense the sense of scarcity. The Bitcoin block mining reward halves every 210,000 blocks, approximately every four years. In its early days, the Bitcoin block reward was 50 coins. Now the reward is 12.5, and will further decrease to 6.25 coins in May 2020. Bitcoin's decreasing rate of distribution means that. Even as awareness of the currency grows, there is less to actually mine. Some of the cons are Inverted means uneven. Bitcoin's inverted distribution model, meaning less people earning more in the beginning and more people earning less today, is one of the primary contributors to its uneven distribution. With so much Bitcoin in the hands of a few early adopters, new miners are burning more energy for less Bitcoin. Hoarding inhibits use of a medium of exchange. Although Bitcoin was released as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, the relative scarcity of the Bitcoin has impeded Bitcoin's goal of serving as a medium exchange. Bitcoin's scarcity has led to its perception as a form of digital gold or a digital store of value. The result of this perception is that many Bitcoin holders are unwilling to spend Bitcoin on day-to-day -day expenses. The Pi economic model, on the other hand, seeks to strike a balance between creating a sense of scarcity for Pi while still ensuring that a large amount does not accumulate in the, into a very small number of hands. We want to make sure our users earn more Pi as they make contributions to the network. Pi's goal is to build an economic model that is sophisticated enough to achieve and balance these priorities while remaining intuitive enough for people to use. Pi's economic de model design requirements. Simple. Build an intuitive and transparent model. Fair distribution. Give a critical mass of the world's population access to Pi. Scarcity. Create a sense of scarcity to sustain Pi's price over time. Meritocratic earning. Reward contributions to build and sustain the network. Pi's token supply. The token emission pile policy. Total max supply is equal to M plus R plus D. So that means M is equal to total mining rewards. R is total referral rewards and D is equal to total developer rewards. Mining supply. In contrast to Bitcoin work, which created a fixed supply of coins for the entire global population, Pi creates a fixed supply of Pi for each person that joins the network up to the first 100 million participants. 
In other words, for each, each person that joins the Pi network, a fixed amount of Pi is pre-mined. This supply is then released over the lifetime of that member based on their level of engagement and contribution to the network security. The supply is released using an exponentially decreasing function similar to Bitcoin's over the member's lifetime. R. Referral Supply In order for a currency to have value, it must be widely distributed. To incentivize this goal, the protocol also generates a fixed amount of pi that serves as a referral bonus for both the referrer and the referee, or both parent and offspring. This shared pool can be mined by both parties over their lifetime. When both parties are actively mining, both referrer and referee are able to draw upon this pool in order to avoid exploitative models that refer where referrers are able to prey on their referees. The referral bonus serves as a network level incentive to grow the network while incentivizing engagement among members in actively securing the network. Developer Reward Supply Pi will fund its ongoing development with a developer reward that is minted alongside each coin that is minted for mining and referrals. Traditionally, cryptocurrency protocols have minted a fixed amount of supply that is immediately placed into treasury. Because Pi's total supply is dependent on the number of members in the network, Pi progressively mints its developer rewards as the network scales. The progressive minting of Pi's developer reward is meant to align the incentive of Pi's contributors with the overall health of the network. F is a, is a logarithmically decreasing function. Early members earn more. While Pi seeks to avoid extreme concentrations of wealth, the network also seeks to reward earlier members and their contributions with a, large, with a relatively larger share of Pi. When networks such as Pi are in their early days, they tend to provide a lower utility for, to participants. For example, imagine having the very first telephone in the world. It would be a great technological innovation, but not extremely useful. However, as more people acquire telephones, each telephone holder gets more utility out of the network. In order to reward people that come to the network early, Pi's individual mining reward and the referral rewards decrease as function of the number of people in the network. In other words, there is a certain amount of Pi that are reserved for each slot in the Pi network. Utility Pool and monetizing our time online Today, everyone is sitting on a veritable treasure trove of untapped resources. Each of us spend hours, days on our phone. While on our phone, each of our views, posts, clicks creates extraordinary profits for large corporations. At Pi, we believe that people have the right to capture value created from their resources. We all know that we can do more together than we can alone. On today's web, massive corporations like Google, Amazon, Facebook have, have immense leverage against individual consumers. As a result, they are able to capture the lion's share of the value created by individual consumers on the web. Pi levels the playing field by allowing its members to pool their collective resources so they can get a share of the value that they create. The graphic below is the Pi stack, where we particularly promising future opportunities for helping our members capture value. Below we go into each of these areas in more detail. Thank you.